Try, try, try so very hard to get out of this human jungle. Try, try, try so hard, but I know that I may not succeed. Try, try, try so hard, like many, many guys before me. Hoping soon that one day I may get outside. In 1978, group of young black people in the new town inner city area of Southampton decided to form a reggae band. They came together in youth clubs and church halls and the legend of Ebony Rockers was born. That summer, Southampton staged its own Rock Against Racism festival in Hoglands Park. Inspired by the movement, Ebony Rockers took to the stage just minutes from the Newtown area. In that period, the band revolved around an original core of young black musicians and singers. In the following decades, around 30 people played in what became a cultural institution. With the passion of youth, the band learned quickly and swiftly built a great reputation for their live gigs. Soon they had a big following in Southampton. Dropping soulful vocals with powerful lyrics, reflecting their own lives, the band became voices for their generation, appearing on TV programs and news features in the South. Trying to get a job, not very good. If people don't face up to the fact that Britain is a multiracial society and attempt to bring those people on the outskirts into the picture, then, you know, it looks quite a gloomy picture, not only for the black community, but for communities which exist in the inner city area. In 1980, with reggae music riding high, the band entered the prestigious Melody Maker magazine Battle of the Bands competition. Ebony Rockers came second and won a recording contract with the world's greatest record company. They released two singles and shared stages with reggae legends like Steel Pulse and Linton Kwesi Johnson. The band left their mark in an era when youth dared to dream. Try, try, try so very hard to get out of this human jungle. Forty-four years later, members of the band were reunited in the city's historic Ogle Road. Once home of the famous Hippodrome Theatre, destroyed by bombing in World War II. The occasion marked the unveiling of a giant permanent mural tribute to Ebony Rockers in the city centre. The crowd gathered excitedly, waiting to see the work of Slam Daniels, Southampton's world-famous graffiti artist. It's fantastic to see so many people here for a little bit of history and, uh, and welcome to this momentous occasion. Who would have thought 40 years later I'd be standing here. 1979 was uh, the Thatcher years, if some of you remember that. A time when young black people were stopped and searched. The criminal justice system didn't do us many favours. Ebony Rockers became a cooperative. It became a collection of young black people who felt that they shared the same culture and music and there were difficulties in terms of being able to share, enjoying themselves in clubs and pubs all over the city. So we had to make our own music in house parties, in shabits, and many other activities. They're not just good songs, they're historical documents of that time. So when you listen to an Ebony Rockers song, when you're tapping your foot and then you start listening to the lyrics, you're talking about someone talking about their time about how politics has, inf has affected their life at that time. It's an incredible achievement and it came from this city. 
Um, so this piece of artwork is by a gentleman who goes by the name of Slam. Where's this Slam? There he is, a round of applause for Slam. I was really excited uh, when I he heard there was going to be an artwork dedicated to Ebony Rockers. Um, just marking uh, their important contribution to Southampton's cultural heritage. Reggae has actually played a, a big part in my own cultural journey. Uh, not least because Jimmy Cliff's Many Rivers to Cross was the backdrop to my first kiss. Um, but more importantly, uh, I've been really lucky to work with some of Reggae's uh, greats, including Lucky Dubé, Maxi Priest, Dennis Pavel, Arturo Tappin, and the legendary Burning Spear. The project we're here to celebrate today is exactly the sort of work that we would want to see in our UK City of Culture, because it is celebrating the contributions of great Setonians from our diverse communities and proudly telling our stories. And I hadn't realised that we were going to have so many of the Ebony Rockers here, and it's, a, it's an enormous privilege to, to meet you in person. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Wow! Thank you. I think we've gone and done it, haven't we? It was a magical moment. Ebony Rockers acknowledged by their home city, with the members signed by EMI immortalised. I'm proud to be part of um, Southampton, proud to be part of the Ebony Rockers, and uh, proud of the state, you see something there? Yeah, so proud of uh, Southampton as a whole, and being part of the culture of Southampton. Considering, I would say, the struggles that we had in the early 70s, just being uh, a black man in the city, um, something like this gives you hope that, you know, the struggle is always there, but if you've got belief in yourself, then you can, you can do many things. I think uh, the city has needed this for a long, long time. I think uh, the Windrush uh, generation never got enough recognition. I think it's about time that we did get some recognition because there's so much good music in Southampton. beautiful in Southampton is always being uplifted and, and held in this great esteem by not only Don John um, but many people in Southampton and all over the south actually. Uh, I was quite surprised a few years ago I was in Southampton visiting from London and someone met me in the street in the middle of the night and said oh you're that girl from and I couldn't believe it after all these years so I'm just honoured it's the way I feel. has been in Southampton for many, many, many years, mainly put to the margins and stigmatised, but still managed to influence the people of the city in a positive way. Yeah, I think we should uh, continue to do stuff like this. Southampton has got a lot of history with black culture. I mean, the struggle's still the same. You know, black people have been in Southampton from day one. We've contributed a hell of a lot to the city. It's a long time overdue, you know, and there should be a lot more. Afterwards, the band and their friends celebrated at a reception. Music was provided by Makassan. They too have been playing reggae music since 1978. You know what I mean? That's, that's what I see. But the rest of the city see way deeper than that. They should see something deeper than just a bunch of people. They have a question who these people are, you know. But for me and you, we look at it, we see our friends out there and we smile. It was a day of memories and reflection. A day honouring the band which triumphed over 1970s racial oppression. It is a special day because we do remember that we have been here for 
quite a while. I've been here since 1964 and in many times we've been marginalized. Um, there have been so many of us who's worked hard in this city, especially in the hospitals and bus drivers and things like that. And people seem to forget that we help to build this city. Case my eyes, like, you know what I mean? 40 odd years, and people, and people think, remember, oh, Joe Dale, I have a devil, don't do blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's unbelievable, you know what I mean? But someone started off in the Nicker Boys Club, and the wife's come to, like, it's unbelievable. 40 years on, and I'm still feeling the buzz, you know? It's a long time coming. Everyone might admit it's a long time coming, but, but, but then, of course, we're going to leave what the situation was then, and our situation is now. It's, 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 we're moving the right way. There's a lot more to can be done, you know what I mean? There's a lot more things to be done for young people within the city, you know what I mean? They I mean, I mean, need people like myself, people like my son, and other people well known to kind of bring, bring people talent out into the city, you know what I'm saying? Just to see that mural up there um, in Southampton on Ogle Road, a place I've walked past so many times um, living in Southampton, it just made me just so proud and happy for you because you know how much of an influence you've been in my life with my music, from the reggae music that we listen to in the car, um, all the reggae reggae hits and Raga Raga volume one all the way through to crazy amounts they must be up to now. But the music that you made with the Ebony Rockers, I remember when I was going through the record collection as a, as a child, coming across your, your Ebony Rockers vinyl um, and thinking, Wow, like I didn't even know that you had the group like that. Cause I, I kind of, you know, I, I just, I was learning about the fact that I knew you played bass guitar and you were amazing, but I just didn't know the kind of records that you were creating as a group and what it was representing the social injustices that were going on at that time and fighting for, for so many people and being the voice for so many people at that time. I just love you and I'm just, just so happy for you as your son, you know, I love you and I'm so happy for the whole group because you're now up on that mural and everyone can see for the, for, the, for the rest of their lives what you've meant for Southampton and what you've meant for reggae music and in my life. The Ebony Rockers mural stands in testimony to the spirit and vitality of Southampton's black community. It's a symbol of pride and passion to be shared with the whole city and as an inspirational beacon for the youth of today. It's an important landmark, celebrating the city's rich diversity and cultural legacy. Southampton calling call call. call.